I am not the ultimate fisherman. Oh my goodness. But I'm getting there. Back in 1838, industrialist Daniel Pratt built a cotton gin factory on the banks of Otago Creek in central Alabama. As the operation became the world's largest producer of cotton gins, the new town of Prattville was established. Fast forward to today, and although the creek no longer powers industrial equipment, it still serves as a focal point for the town with summers filled with swimmers and kayakers. Since this creek is so easily accessible from where I live, I tend to fish it more than any other body of water, which also means I've already done videos of it on the channel in the past. Click that subscribe button down below so you can go check those videos out later. But to bring you up to speed on what species we've pulled out of here so far, the long eared sunfish, the blacktail shiner, bluegill, channel catfish, black crappie, white crappie, largemouth bass, and Alabama bass. But I still have over five miles of creek to cover going from the dam all the way to the Alabama River. And a lot of water offers the possibility of a lot of species. So we're going to try to pull some more out of here and at the very least try to get into the double digits. There's a fish right there. I think that's a type of sucker. We'll see if we can catch it. Got it, finally. Took long enough. Now I just gotta figure out what it is. Not putting up much of a fight. Not even sure he knows he's hung. Oh my goodness. I think it's a buffalo. There he goes. Huh. Oh. That was not what I thought it was pretty cool that's a new species for this channel all right so this is a smallmouth buffalo often mistaken for the common carp but if you go and you look at the mouth they're actually missing the barbells that hang off the side these are actually native to north america and especially they run rampant in alabama in the mobile basin this is definitely a smaller one they can clear 80 pounds some people claim that they eat them i have no particular need for that so i'm gonna go ahead and let him go Moving on. The suckers, understandably, have head for the hills after seeing one of their friends get abducted by an alien. So, got the photo tank here. I'm gonna give it a quick fill up with water because while I was waiting for that thing to bite for well over an hour, we actually have some movement going on right here in this little bitty, like, I guess pond run off. There's a pond up above the hill and they got the excess water coming down right here. So this, teeny tiny little outflow of water right here i have some little bit of movement underneath these limbs and bushes i'm pretty sure i know what it is but either way we don't have it on the channel yet so i swapped over to the the micro micro setup which is just a broken piece of an ultralight rod that you know there was no way i was going to repair that that's broken way down at the bottom so essentially it's just a ultralight cane pole now and tied to that we got a carolina rig with a tanago hook the the tiniest tiniest little hook that you can think of in a itty bitty piece of worm on here that might even be too big for what i'm seeing in there so we're gonna have to play statue over here at the front because as i walked up they scattered but if i sit here long enough they should eventually poke their heads back out something 
I don't think that was what I was targeting though. <laughs> but still, good gracious. And he let go of the hook. Oh, okay. Top minnow. Now what kind are you? So it's definitely a top minnow. I just have to figure out if it's a black spotted or a black striped top minnow. The usual way to tell the difference is that if it's missing spots on the upper half of the fish above the lateral line, you can go ahead and assume it's a black stripe. But this one's weird because it has like a couple of little black specks on it. So I'm not really sure which species it actually is. So I'll have to research that later and figure it out. I've done the research. We're gonna call it a black stripe top minnow. It does have a couple of those little specks above the lateral band, but they're not very distinct and there's definitely not very many of them. So, new species, black stripe top minnow. A anyway, back to this. Either way, it's definitely new to the channel. I don't know if it's new to my species list at all. And as you can see, we got a lot of people moving in to swim, so I'm probably about to swap spots here in a minute. But we're gonna go ahead and let him go first. And there it goes. All right, let's go find us a slightly quieter spot. All right, so I scooted over to where that little drainage pipe from the pond up above is emptying out. So we've got this slightly deeper little nursery pool over here and comes down into this very thin little stream of water, which actually has just a ton of these like little freshwater mussel shells all in it. So I wonder if they must I don't know if they're thriving over here or if this is just where all the raccoons bring them to crack them open and eat them. But either way, we've got a lot of movement in the water. There's a lot of tadpoles in this area, of course, but I am seeing some little bitty minnows of some sort are swimming around, so we're going to give this a try. Got it, something. What are you? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Got it. Well, that took a while, but we finally got you. So this is a western mosquito fish. Its common name derives from its tendency to prey on mosquito larvae, despite that being just one portion of its overall diet. But that assumption of it being a mosquito-destroying machine has led to this species, along with the eastern mosquito fish, being introduced not only around the country, but around the world. And this highly aggressive less than three inch fish has had some major impacts wherever it has been introduced both good and bad for example in australia it's outcompeted the native fish and caused a decline in those species while russia actually has a statue dedicated to the gambusia genus in commemoration of its contributions in combating malaria in the sochi region so this teeny tiny fish actually has some worldwide impact but it is native here, so we're going to go ahead and let it go. Right back out into his little stream. If he'll turn around the right way. I don't know why they always do this. There he goes. Hovering right around at the bottom. He'll figure out where he is and move on here soon. Come to say hi. I had fun fish. Boop, and he's gone. Got whatever this is. Settle down. Settle down. Oh my goodness. Water. You're a different type of top minnow. So this is a brand new species for me. This is a bayou top minnow. As you can see, it doesn't have that lateral band that runs all the way from the nose to the tail. Instead, it's got those vertical bands going all along its side, which actually helped with the quick identification of this species because the bands on his side go down below the lowest line of dots, which differentiates him from a couple different types of top minnows. So easy to identify, new species, super excited. I'm gonna go ahead and let it go. Go on, Mr. Top Minnow. Go on. We got some rain moving in, so we're going to go ahead and just 
call this a day but it was a successful outing we caught four new species for Tauga Creek and actually four new species for the channel period and all of that came from this one little popular swimming hole at the back end of the park so we still got several miles to go before we hit the river's edge and at some point we're going to have to stop waiting and I'm actually going to have to get back in the kayak to get to the bottom end of the creek but until then y'all the good one